Hey, Steve here, and welcome to this next episode of Processing Subscribers Images. Uh, today's image has been sent in from Stan Hellman, so thanks Stan for sending this one through. Uh, Stan didn't really have any particular issues or um, any specific techniques or questions that he wanted to know uh, the answer to uh, regarding this image. Uh, he just sent it through as an example to see how I would personally process this myself. So um, yeah, I think in this example, I'm going to be using the luminosity masking panel, which I've been uh, demonstrating in most of these other uh, videos in this series. So um, yeah, if you're not familiar, if this is the first one you're watching, then uh, if you haven't downloaded the panel yet, you can do so by clicking the links or buttons below this video. Uh, it's $97 to download the panel, personally designed and developed by me to be as uh, simple and easy to use as possible. Uh, so, you know, what I really wanted to do, having taught luminosity masking since 2013, and what I've learned over the past sort of six years or so, uh, is that you know, a lot of people are finding that if they haven't used these techniques for a while, then they need to go back and kind of relearn some of them uh, before they can start using them again. So that's been a bit of a barrier for my past students. So I designed this panel with the idea of solving that problem. So, you know, if, as long as you've got the kind of the general gist of what luminosity masking is and what it does, the panel can help you with all of the uh, technical side of uh, running the uh, techniques and, and creating the selections and masks and whatnot that you're going to need to use to, uh, to create some really powerful results. So, uh, yeah, with that said, let's move on uh, to the demonstration. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I mean, the image on the screen at the moment is, uh, is a really good starting point already. All I've done so far is open it in Photoshop straight from Camera Raw. And we can see the histogram is nicely, uh, you know, it's nicely contained. So there's nothing really under or overexposed except maybe just a touch in the clouds over here. That won't be too much of a problem. So um, yeah, in terms of my six stage workflow, uh, we're already sort of past stage two having imported the image and then reached a kind of flat exposure uh, with, that doesn't require any sort of further blending or, or uh, adjustment of light and shade, etc. So yeah, the first thing we can do is just move on to uh, stage three, which is sorting out any color issues or tweaking the color balance to our liking. So yeah, just looking at this, I mean, obviously we've got like a warm side and a, and a cool side, and that's just the way the sunset was uh, you know falling on on the clouds with the blue sky behind um, I'm not sure how this is going to play out but you know what we can do is just to have a uh, just add a curves adjustment layer and just see what happens when we start tweaking these red green and blue values so you know if I just push the red curve up here we can see the reds increasing if we pull it down the the right side is getting a bit too green for my liking, so I think we won't do anything in the red channel. Uh, let's see what happens when we remove green here. That adds a bit of a purple tint. Maybe if we then remove some blue, that will kind of create like a warmth that the, uh, you know, just adjusting the red channel, you know, just, it just adds it in a different way um, to what the, just adjusting the red channel alone did. Um, either way, I'm not too keen on what I've done here, so I'll just undo that. I think, if anything, all, I'm, all I want to do here is just remove a touch of green, because to me, it's just got a little bit of a green tint through the middle here in the water. So I'll just remove that ever so slightly. And then I might even just mask it out first. So Command I or Control I to mask, uh, to flip the uh, the mask to black. And then I might just take a a white brush and just brush in here through the middle, just to kind of get rid of that green, slightly green tint. It's not a massive problem, but it's just something that. I always tend to look for um, just through sort of experience really of working with this type of shot. Um, 
Okay, so with that done, I think, well, stage three of the workflow, um, you know, as I said before, relates to making any color adjustments. We can probably come back to it if we continue on with the contrast adjustments and realize that we want to make any uh, further adjustments to the uh, to the colors. So, yeah, let's just skip ahead and add some contrast. Um, and the first first port call usually for me is to add a levels adjustment. So under the light section in the panel, we've got curves and levels. Um, I'll just add a levels one adjustment. Um, each of these buttons works and adds a slightly different amount of contrast in a different way. Uh, if you read the uh, documentation on luminositymaskingpanel.com, then that will kind of explain the difference and go into a lot more detail of how each one works. But levels one is always a good one to get started with. Uh, and then let's just open this up and just tweak it a little bit further and see what happens to the foreground. So already that's yeah, that's a quite a nice amount of contrast being added there in the foreground. The sky is obviously overexposed, but yeah, we can fix that by masking this out again in a similar way to what we did with the previous layer. Let's invert the mask, so Command or Control I, and I'm just I'm just going to basically just brush this effect into the whole foreground. So not not using luminosity masks yet. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just going to basically bring this into the whole foreground first, and just down here in the bottom left, I want to just make sure that I'm not underexposing those shadows there. So this is where a luminosity mask will come into play. Uh, let's scroll up to the luminosity selections section of the panel. I'll turn previews on just to see how much of the shadows I'm selecting. And I'm going to press the five button on the shadow end. So everything to the left of zero is going to create a shadow selection. Everything to the right of zero is going to create a highlight selection. So because I want to mask out from this levels one effect, the darkest shadows, I want to create a selection that isolates those darkest shadows. So like this, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of isolating only the darkest shadows. Um, but we could get a little bit more isolation than that, I think. And we can do that by increasing the contrast using the uh, the levels button here under the modify section in build and modify mask. So anyth anything you do here um, with the modify buttons is going to affect the preview of the uh, of the selection that we're creating. So to increase contrast in this preview, we can do what we would normally do with a levels adjustment of any other kind and just tweak these control points so that we're really picking out those darker shadows. Click OK when we're happy with that adjustment. And now to load this uh, preview as a selection, we just hit the use mask button here in the build and modify mask section. So use mask. And now we can see that's a selection. Click on the levels one adjustment layer, switch to a black brush, command H or control H on a PC to hide the marching ants. And now I'm just going to brush with that black brush through here. And we can see those shadows are just being lifted ever so slightly back to their original pre contrast state. And let's confirm exactly what's happened there by looking at the layer mask itself. So we can see this contrast adjustment has been applied everywhere where this mask is white. And so you know, that's most of the foreground minus these dark gray and black bits, uh, which if I toggle this off and on now, we can see the effect of that. And if I toggle the mask off and on, just paying attention, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Just pay attention to the shadows here. Notice how they get darker. So this is with the contrast adjustment applied. And now this is with the mask removing the adjustment from those shadow areas. So that, you know, 
those those kind of little tweaks that um, you know rather than just allowing the whole foreground to take on this contrast adjustment just being careful not to underexpose those shadows uh, with each and every adjustment layer that you uh, create especially those that add contrast um, that's just going to help with the subtlety and the sort of refined the refined look of the finished image um, yeah because you haven't blown those uh, shadows and underexposed them right at the start so with that said uh, let's move on and uh, see what we can do in the sky so yeah I would normally go to and fro between like I mean this shot is obviously mainly two sections we've got the foreground and the sky uh, so I would sort of add an adjustment for the foreground and then add one for the sky and then go back and forth um, if there was more elements to the shot um, well, I suppose you could say that the jetty itself is like the third element and the water is the second element uh, so you know I'll probably do some adjustments just on the jetty shortly but you know, I like to divide an image up and adjust each section uh, separately from each other because you know it's probably I don't know I haven't counted but it's probably only half the time that you make an adjustment that it looks good across the entire image so um, yeah it's all about multiple small selective adjustments so that said let's add another contrast adjustment and let's see whoops uh, okay so what's happened here I still had that luminosity selection active so it's loaded it straight into that levels adjustment so let's get rid of that and just command or control D to deselect to make sure I haven't got the selection active okay let's try that again so levels one now we can move this up to brighten the sky and we can move this down to sort of darken it a bit to create that contrast but the fact that I've gone beyond the uh, you know I've come inside the where the data goes in the histogram here so what, what that's basically telling me is that I've clipped the histogram so I've clipped the highlights and if I hold alt or option on the keyboard and press this button then it will show me where I've overexposed so that's good to know because now I can create a selection um, for the highlights so I'm going to press 5 on the highlights uh, luminosity selections okay that's going to yeah, isolate those brightest sh uh, the <laughs> brightest um, highlights I'll click use mask and now with a black brush I can just come and repair those bits that I've overexposed just to bring that color and detail back where it was lost and so previewing with the mask off and on we can see the effect that's had so you know this is with before those uh, adjustments in the luminosity mask and this is after so just recovering those blown highlights and then yeah we can probably just use a brush to remove this effect from the foreground entirely I'll go 100% on the brush just to do that a bit quicker and if we wanted we could probably also mask around this little uh, this little roof at the end here just so that we uh, aren't darkening the roof of that too much because it's overlapping into the sky so we can probably use the quick selection tool for this because it's a man-made object and it's like got very well defined edges um, oh, what's happened okay that's better my, my photoshop or oh, my computer was uh, under threat of crashing there for a second um, okay so yeah because it's got very much uh, very well defined lines we can usually just use the quick selection tool to draw a selection around it and then with the brush just mask that out you know mask that effect out so if I look at the mask now there we go that's darkened the sky without darkening this little this little roof over here so 
where does that leave us? So let's go back to the start to see where we started. So here we are. This is the original image. This is with these three adjustments. So uh, yeah, let's let's keep on with the uh, with the contrast adjustments. Um, actually, I might go to just a, a regular curve adjustment that's going to lighten the scene. So I've got a shortcut for that. I've got a curves adjustment there, um, and I'm just going to invert the mask. Uh, to mask it out. I'm just going to see what it looks like if I start brushing some brightness into the uh, into the jetty here. Now I'm not actually being as accurate as I could be with these brush strokes, but this is just a bit of a bit of a test to see how it looks really. Okay, that's quite effective. So yeah, I think what we can do is actually bring a bit more attention to this and make it uh, stand out a bit from the sea just by brightening it and then darkening the water as well. So there's a bit of, you know, we're creating a bit of separation between the two elements within the frame. Uh, I probably don't want to brighten it much more than this. Now let's see what happens if we uh, add a bit more contrast to the water. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's invert the mask. And again, let's mask this in now. So I'm allowing myself to brush over the uh, over these uh, railings. We'll fix that up in just a moment. Okay, so that's pretty good so far. Let's uh, let's see what we can do about um, about fixing up these these railings here, I think I'll probably see what a quick selection can do for us again because we've got those straight lines from the man-made wood. That might I'm going to have to zoom in. Uh, that might be accurate enough. Mm, this could end up taking too long. No, forget that. Let's uh, let's see what a luminosity selection can do for us. Uh, so let's have a look and uh, mm, 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 okay so this is focusing on the shadows so the issue here is that the water behind the railings are uh, the water behind the railings is a similar brightness level to the railings so we might have to make a choice here and just Just not darken this bottom corner up quite so much. Darken it up, darken it down. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. Um, so let's have a look now. Okay. Um, so okay, let's carry on with another adjustment in the sky. I think. Um, yeah, in the light section of the panel, we've got this multiply button under the darken uh, section. So this gives a nice darkening effect usually. Um, it sort of darkens and allows for a bit of glow as well. Um, okay, you just need to remind me tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> just a reminder there to get my green slip for my car. Um, you may recognize that from a, <laughs> from a previous video as well, so I still haven't done it. Um, all right, so this is a nice darkening effect. Let's use this mainly for the sky. So invert the mask with a white brush. Let's just brush it into the sky. Nice and easy does it. Not too heavy handed. OK, 
Okay, and just remind ourselves how far we've come. So from here we've, well, basically just uh, sort of increased the warmth of the image and created a little bit of separation between the jetty and the water. It's not too much at the moment. I think because it's a shiny surface, if we do too much of this kind of contrast boosting, it might end up looking a bit weird. Um, so, yeah, where do we go from here? Not quite sure I like what I've done to these railings. Let me see if I can remove whatever effect or whatever adjustment has created that effect. Well, it's all of them really. Uh, okay, so now if this was a shot that I had a lot of time to work on and it was a shot for myself, um, at this point I would probably use the pen tool to create a path that accurately kind of goes around the edge or all the edges of this and then use this path or load it as a selection and then use that to mask all of my adjustments. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do that in this demo because that will probably be well over an hour's worth of video. Um, but yeah, so just for the sake of this demo, just keep in mind that with this, um, yeah, with this railing, it would be worth spending the time to create a path like I'm doing here, and then saving this path and then loading it as a, uh, as a selection so that you can then keep reusing this same uh, selection to mask all of these adjustments out of the um, you know, out of this railing. So how do I deselect that? I'm not quite sure. Um, just press delete. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, because as you can see here, each uh, each adjustment that I've added has uh, affected these railings, and not each, not every one of these adjustments has actually had a desirable effect. Um, this one especially is making the railings a bit too dark, even though you know it's doing what we want for the in the water behind it. Uh, and yeah, I think, like I said, I won't labour the point too much, but um, yeah, just keep in mind that that would be how I would mask this out because we can't really lose use luminosity masking because the brightness levels are the same between the railing and what it's in front of and so yeah the, the uh, quick selection tool probably isn't going to be as accurate as you would want it to be I tried it a little bit down here and it didn't quite work uh, so yeah the pen tool would be your friend here it's going to take a lot of time but it would be worth the investment you know, if this was going to be a portfolio shot. So, um, yeah, keeping that in mind, here's where we started and here's where we are now. Um, I think I would like to try good old water and effect just to see what this does. So this is this type of shot looks like the sort of shot that this would have a desirable effect on. So let's just reduce the opacity there. Yeah, this is probably a bit too strong still. So again, like in some of the previous walkthroughs I've uh, shown or some of the subscriber images, what I'll do is to apply the Autumn effect only in the highlights. I'm going to load a highlight selection in the luminosity selection section of the panel. So just press one there. Previews are turned off, so it just goes straight to loading it as a selection. And then I'm going to press the Autumn button now, and that's going to create the Autumn effect with that selection loaded into the layer mask to reveal it only in the highlights. So there, that looks a lot more subtle, that's a lot nicer. Um, and okay, from here, let's see. I mean, this is technically could be uh, seen as a sort of enhancement that you make towards the end of a uh, processing workflow, or it could be something, you know, you could class it technically as a contrast adjustment. So either way, I don't think it really matters. 
Um, and let's just see what we can do with another curve adjustment. I think this time maybe we just we just brighten up this bottom end a little bit. And I think so. I'm just looking at this, and the bottom, like the shadows, just seem a little bit seem a little bit too dark and crunchy. And I would normally, as I said, create that path with the pen tool to uh, to adjust the railings separately to everything else. But failing that, when when an image is looking a bit kind of yeah, the shadows just look, don't quite look right, like like they do here. Um, what we can do is use this contrast vignette shortcut here that I've created. And actually, scrub that. <laughs> I'll show you how to do it manually because it's not quite going to be exactly the same effect. Um, so let's add a con uh, curves adjustment. And now let's take this point down the bottom here. So we're not clicking in the middle of the curve, we're just clicking on the point right down here in the bottom left. And I'm going to press up on the keyboard just a handful of times, so about six so far. And we can see here the input zero, output six, and that's moving the bottom of the line up a few notches. And if you see here, that's just lifting those bottom shadows a tiny bit. And um, yeah, what I find is that that sort of also helps to make it seem a little bit more uh, refined and not so crunchy in the shadows. Um, I've probably done it a bit too much there, so I'll go down a couple. Again, that's just a real subtle adjustment, but it can be one of those uh, one of those things that's it's hard to detect that it's been done, and you wouldn't necessarily notice the difference um, if you hadn't seen the before and after. But again. It can just be one of those intangible things when you're looking at the uh, image as a finished result. Um, yeah, so from here, I guess just continuing the workflow, we would, add, uh, we would head over to some dodging and burning. Um, you know, I'd probably do a little bit of dodging and burning to enhance the detail in the uh, in the jetty. Let's go to the finishes tab in the panel. Um, we can see what the Cloud Dramatizer is going to do. We've got an effect here called Cloud Dramatizer, uh, which is going to add some contrast into the clouds for us. Um, we had a little preview there as it's building the effect. So now with a white brush, we can just brush into the sky to reveal this effect. And that's just picking out a few of those details in the clouds there. So this is a optional, of course, but just a before and after. Uh, that's something you can choose to use or not. Um, otherwise, sharpening, maybe we can just do a bit of sharpening just to uh, yeah, really finalize the detail in the, uh, in the jetty and in the railings there. It's just taking a second to load. And I'll invert the mask here so we can see the effect we can see the sharpening in full effect, but what you'd want to do is um, start with it with a black mask and then brush the sharpening in only where you want it. Um, so that would look like this. Just sharpening these railings and whatnot. Again, the more subtle you can be, the more refined the finished image is going to look. And maybe one final thing that I would possibly try. Uh, let's go back to the contrast vignette and add that. So this is basically a curve adjustment that just uh, has been set to darken the image, but it's also had that it's also had that little point there raised a bit so that we don't over darken the shadows. Uh, so now with a white brush, I'm just gonna see if I can darken this top left of the sky a little bit and just around the top as well maybe
just to help sort of enclose the image because if the top corner of an image is bright and your eye is drawn towards it then that can be a not necessarily a positive thing okay I think that's a nice yeah a nice point at which uh, yeah which we can stop I think I'm pretty happy with how this one has turned out let's go back to the start again and see how far we've come um, whoops <laughs> done that in the wrong order okay so this is the starting image and then this is with all the layers applied so obviously a big boost in color there whether you like that or not you know you can choose to tone it down a little bit um, but you know this is one way of, uh, of processing this image uh, that's basically the you know, the real quick version of how I would go about doing it myself um, you know really loosely following my six stage workflow um, but yeah hopefully this has given you some ideas and some tips and pointers and whatnot on how to process similar images yourself and like I said at the start if you want to use the panel that I've got here that shortcuts a lot of those luminosity selection creating techniques and you know, well basically the top half of the panel here the luminosity selections and build and modify mask these are designed to help make luminosity masking just really easy and quick uh, but then we've got all these other sections here light color which I haven't even looked at today um, effects and finishes and output for web these are all some handy tools that you can uh, combine the luminosity selection stuff with um, or you can just use them as they are uh, without using the luminosity selections but uh, yeah so basically the panel's sort of two halves really one is the luminosity stuff and the other is the light color effects finishes and output um, and yeah, you know, the whole purpose of me putting this panel together was to um, just speed everything up for you and make everything quick and easy without having to remember all the technical stuff of how exactly every technique is done um, so you know if you want to get that if you haven't got it already then uh, use the links below this video uh, it's 97 Australian dollars and yeah I hope to get your feedback on how awesome it's been for you and how much it's uh, improved your workflow so yeah with that I'll say thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon